So, the straw that broke the camel's back. Is that just a cute saying, or is that ancient wisdom about spine health? So, we're going to go over some information from Stuart McGill today. Now, Stuart McGill is a Canadian researcher who possibly knows more about the spine than anyone on the planet. Um, he's published a lot of articles. He's written several books. I own a couple of his books. And he actually has a lot of videos on YouTube. So I would, inc if, you, if you're interested in spine health, I would definitely encourage you to check him out. There's an abundance of information from him. There's information about him. We're just going to over, go over some basic principles today and explain some things. The first thing I'm going to talk about is how the spine is actually structured. So when we look at a spine, we've got vertebrae stacked on top of each other. And in between those vertebrae, we're going to have discs. The discs are what are most likely to be injured, but the vertebrae can be injured as well in a couple of different ways. So today we're going to focus on the discs and a little bit about how they're structured, mostly just how to keep them from getting damaged. So basically you want to think about the discs between your vertebrae, kind of like tough little balloons that are filled with fluid. They're not filled with a constant amount of fluid at all times. So in the morning when you wake up is actually when those discs are the most prone to injury. Because when we sleep at night and gravity is not working on us the same way, those discs fill with fluid. So right when we get up in the morning, that is not a good time to do things like crunches or sit-ups or burpees. I might argue that there's never a good time for burpees, but I'll talk about that another time. So what, what Dr. McGill recommends is after you've been up for about 30 minutes to an hour, that's a better time to exercise if you can exercise in the morning, just because it gives gravity some time to work on your spine. Some of that fluid leaves the discs and they're not quite so rigid. The next thing we want to talk about is I think people tend to think of spinal injuries in the context of an event that happens. And the truth is a lot of spinal injuries are degenerative. They're things that happen over time. Then there's a critical incident. So back to the thing about the straw that broke the camel's back, that's an interesting old thing because, you know, the, the story is that the camel can handle a lot of load, but eventually it gets to a point where it just can't take it anymore. Stuart McGill talks about how he thinks that discs have a limited number of flexion. And once they exceed that, they're prone to delaminate. Basically, they wear kind of thin and they're more likely to rupture. I should say they're more likely to bulge and possibly to herniate. So it's important to keep in mind that a lot of spinal injuries, they are not isolated events. It's not something that just someone did something one day and it was too intense and the body couldn't take it and something went wrong. It is an accumulation of things that we do on a daily basis that add up to a spine that's more prone to injury. So I've heard a lot of stories about someone throwing it out their back, picking up a pen. Uh, I've heard about powerlifters who do great doing deadlifts and squats, but they'll injure their back moving a 45 pound plate. When we're looking at things like that, that are sort of daily tasks or normal tasks, the way to avoid those injuries, in addition to just the whole concept of spine hygiene, is when you pick something up that's very light, you want to treat it like something that's very heavy. So if you, if you reach down with a flexed spine and you pick something up off the ground, that puts a lot more compression on the discs than if you keep your spine neutral. When the spine is vertical, and the things are tight, the spine can handle a lot of weight. You can still have injuries, but it's much less prone to injuries when everything's tight and the spine's vertical. However, when we flex the spine, it puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the discs. The discs are not designed to deal with a lot of compression and flexion at the same time. So if we go to pick something up and our spine is flexed, at the very least, we're probably wearing on those discs and make them, making them more prone to injury and adding to that straw on the camel back analogy and possibly we're reaching that critical point where we've done it one too many times and something's going to give it is worth throwing out here that i think a lot of the times when someone has a back injury it's not the disc that gives it's the muscle that's cramping to protect the disc most of the time when i've seen someone who had really bad back pain or real chronic back pain it was a muscular issue caused by less desirable me mechanics so in those cases, soft tissue work, doing the right kinds of stretches to let the muscles relax that are, that are too tight, and then addressing daily things so that we're not doing things that makes the body feel like 
The nervous system needs to protect the spine by cramping the muscles. The last thing I'm going to talk about there is landing with a flexed spine. So what does that mean? You see this sometimes when people are doing things like snowboarding. People do it on bicycles. You see it a lot when people do box jumps. Okay, when you do a box jump, your spine should not flex. If your spine is flexing to get to the top of that box, you're not jumping as high as you think you are, and that's really bad for your back. So when you do box jumps, if you do them, your spine should be neutral the whole time. If you have to tuck your hips, again, you're just not jumping as high as you think you are. Spine hygiene is just taking care of your back. And you think about it like you would take care of your skin or take care of your teeth. It's just making sure the things we do on a daily basis are geared towards the longevity of our spine. When we do basic functions, we want to make sure we're keeping our spine neutral most of the time. And if we have to twist, and sometimes we're going to have to twist, we're going to have to flex. But just be mindful that if we do that with a load, we're putting a lot more pressure on those discs. Now, strengthening the muscles that support the spine is really important. And it's important to understand that there's a big difference between training, you know, the abdominals, the core, whatever you want to call it. There's a big difference between training those for function versus training those purely for aesthetics. But side bridges are fantastic. I think regular bridges are good too. There's a quadruped exercise. Some people call that the horse. Some people call it the Superman. And there's a lot that can go into spine hygiene. Dr. McGill's written several books about it. One of the key things, and this goes back to the, like the power lifter who hurts their back lifting a 45 pound plate that, you know, they'll pull six or 700 pounds and not have an injury, but then putting a plate up or racking a plate, they'll, you know, something will tweak. When we handle something that's very light relative to what we can do, we want to treat it like it's heavy. Okay. If you use the same mechanics for something that's not difficult for you to pick up that you would use for something that is difficult for you to pick up, your chances of having a back injury are going to go down. There's always a chance, but you're just you're stacking things in your favor. So, so strengthen the muscles that support the spine. Learn about spine hygiene. Treat light things like they're heavy, and your chances of having a healthy back will only improve. Thank you for watching. Little things that up.